Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and for a number of you of a certain age and stage, uh, you may remember that song, uh, You Gotta Have Heart, Peggy Lee. A number of years ago, uh, the famous uh, statesman Henry Kissinger made a rather uh, interesting comment. Uh, he was known as a tough guy, and uh, he emerged one time after a health exam that uh, was a uh, part of the news, and he uh, quipped. He said, a number of people around the world uh, don't think that I have a heart. He says, well, the good news is that I do, and the bad news is that it's in bad shape. And as a result of that, he needed serious heart surgery to repair his heart. Well, of course, as I may have mentioned in the program just uh, the day before and the day I took off yesterday, I was uh, gone because my wife, Karen, I had to have a significant heart procedure, as they call it. And that got me to thinking a lot about, of course, I had to do the research and do the work, uh, but uh, there's an incredible great tradition that talks about the state of our own heart. And I thought that on this uh, Friday going into the weekend, it might be good to talk about the uh, state of our heart. I believe that'll be an interesting idea, and I hope you will join me and participate. Uh, these are interesting ideas for sure. My name is Stan Houston, and the program begins right now. Well, first of all, I want to begin on a profound note of gratitude. Um, and then, of course, I want to uh, kind of extend that to just how grateful many of us, including most of us in this audience, should be. Well, here's what happened, of course. Uh, my wife has what's called atrial fibrillation. That's an irregular heartbeat. And uh, it can cause very serious problems. And uh, if it gets serious enough, the, the heart literally loses the ability to be a heart. And, of course, we know when that happens, uh, death will follow, just certainly. That is the key organ of uh, who we are and how we live. Well, the uh, atrial fibrillation was uh, what we finally diagnosed. And, uh, again, we're discovering more and more about disease in the fact that uh, uh, this condition affected not only Karen, but it also affected her brother, and her sister. And so uh, it's a part of the things that we're learning that uh, oftentimes the diseases that come into us, uh, they're somewhat genetic. And genetic conditions um, have, a, have a great deal of influence on uh, the state of our health and the state of our well-being. And so uh, she'd been under treatment for it using particular medicines. But after uh, a number of episodes, right after our move here to Carolina, uh, the uh, doctor um, who uh, had uh, really kind of rescued her during the first episode here, and uh, he was one of the premier cardiologists in the area, said that, uh, Karen's time, we need to uh, do the final solution, which is the oblation, which is uh, quite a unique surgery in which they go in uh, with electrodes, and they go in and they uh, find parts of the heart that need burning, and uh, that's an interesting way of putting it, so that those parts of the heart that are prone to uh, go out of sync and go out of timing, causing the irregular heartbeat, uh, they can be softened or deadened so that the heart can resume a, a hopeful lifetime uh, that's left of uh, regular participation and regulation. And they've made incredible progress in this, and what used to be, and, of course, this is the issue. For many years, obviously, until just recently, at least in terms of time and history, uh, atrial fibrillation uh, was and still is a chronic, uh, very severe condition. And uh, the result, of course, is death. So we went to the new hospital and what a structure it was, my wife described as she went in, that... Uh, 
There were seven to eight people there on the team. There's this huge screen that they watch as, in effect, they put uh, things that will go through the imaging of your chest and abdomen. And what happens is that the uh, doctor, who is obviously an incredible technician, using the electronic probes and watching on the screen, will then watch and see which parts of the heart he should do his procedure on. And it's a two to three hour deal, uh, lengthy preparation, and then a, a good deal of recovery. Well, I was at the hospital most of the day, but uh, finally I got a call and again, good rate service. It was actually the doctor himself who called me on my cell phone as I sat in the uh, waiting room. And he told me that uh, the procedure was done and that he was encouraged, that it was uh, it was a uh, it was quite a quite a procedure. Took a little longer than they expected, but they have uh, they have good feelings about it, and they believe it'll be good results. And uh, uh, she's doing well. Got a bit of pain, but uh, she'll be uh, she'll be okay. Obviously, it's great news. Well, what happened, of course, is am I putting this together? Uh, soon, I will be going to the hospital to retrieve her if everything is working well. I could not help but think, here's how grateful and graced I am. By the way, this also happens to me every time I go to a modern day supermarket and I actually see in this very, very nice supermarket down just about a block and a half from our little apartment, uh, more wonderful food than most people who have ever lived and certainly most people who even live today would not believe the abundance and the variety and the quality of the food that even though the prices have gone up, of course, um, the amount of wonderful nutrition that is available to me is like a, a modern miracle in many ways. And uh, I actually not only say thank you to the people who run the store, and uh, I give a word of prayer, thanks, uh, for the fact that I'm able to live where I don't even ever think about starving to death or where my next meal is going to come from. How, how grateful and graced I am. Well, as I saw everything that came out of that uh, procedure I went through yesterday, uh, I could not help, again, from deep gratitude, I went around and all of the people who I could at least see that were part of the team, I thanked them profoundly, and I, I said, God bless you, I thank you so much. And uh, then uh, as the, the technology was described that made this possible, that of course, <laughs> most people in the rest of the world don't have anything like that. But at this major medical center in this research center of Carolina, there it is. And uh, I have been graced indeed. But it did get me to think about, first of all, how grateful I am. But then the whole idea of the state of our heart. Now, of course, the heart is vital, but all of us know that, um, as uh, <laughs> Peggy Lee sang, um, you got to have heart. And what that meant, of course, is you have to have strength and determination and compassion. And um, in effect, we've for years, going back even into ancient literature and obviously for the uh, people in the religious tradition, the, the term heart is the center of our emotions. Uh, it, it is the part of us that uh, is vital and what uh, current science has shown us, that that is not just a metaphor, that truly where there are things that we have believed about our emotions and our feelings, you know, heartfelt, is that they're not centered necessarily in the brain, in the skull, but they really are connected in a neurological sense to, you got it, the real heart. So, I just wanted to think about that and be thankful for that. 
And then I also uh, came across, you know, the unique symbolism of the heart. Uh, here's what happens. Uh, just recently, uh, Pope Francis recommended a simple prayer that he said he learned from his grandmother. It's often translated in English with a more archaic sound. And here it goes. Okay. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. Well, the Holy Father led those in St. Peter's Square in praying it after the midday Angelus on Sunday, June 7, 2020. He said this, Jesus, make my heart more like yours. Uh, and I thought about that. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a good thing to say. That the idea of uh, not only do we have life because of the heart, but the heart can truly be perhaps uh, a reevaluation of the state of our heart, the courage. And uh, oftentimes I have to say it all comes down to courage. And uh, we believe that that's part of what it means to have heart, uh, exuberance, confidence, compassion, care for others. And uh, that's something we need to be thankful for and we need to ask more of. You know, we got to have heart. Uh, God, give us more of your heart. So I just wanted to take this time, just a few minutes on this Friday, flowing into the weekend. Celebrate if you're from America. We celebrate uh, what I would say, this is half time. <laughs> you know, we've had six months and we've got six months more to go. This is half time in the year. And we celebrate the Fourth of July, which of course is like most countries, they have a kind of a celebration of the birth or the creation of their country or the establishment of it. July 4th, when the, the United States colonies declared their independence from Great Britain, and uh, that was the beginning of uh, the United States of America and uh, what it is today. So we celebrate that with the fireworks and the good times and the family partying and celebrations and many times even religious commemorations of thankfulness. But at the uh, halftime, perhaps it's good to say, you know, we're still in incredibly difficult times. And maybe we should go back to that wonderful little expression that uh, the, uh, the Pope said, Jesus, make my heart more like yours. And even if you don't follow that faith, that's a good prayer for all of us. The man, the man for all seasons, the man for all stages, uh, uh, was a man who truly had a real heart for others and uh, for what it takes to live well and uh, serve others in this world. Jesus, make my heart more like yours. All of these are, for me, rather interesting ideas, and I hope they are the same for you. We'll be back, and then we'll close it up. Okay, uh, think about that as perhaps you uh, have the weekend ahead of you, and for those in North America, perhaps a longer weekend. Uh, think about it. Okay, it's halftime. Uh, what are we going to do with the second half of this year to make it a better year? Yeah, and uh, that courage and that conviction and that clarity and that compassion. Uh, hey, what am I going to do to really give it a... Uh, uh, as I say, a full heart life, fully alive, uh, thankful for the heart I have and thankful for the life I have and how can I actually live my life more fully and completely and compassionately and courageously in the second half of 22. Please reach out to me. I believe that uh, when it comes to uh, encouraging you and speaking to you and helping you and your company, uh, we can help you. My name is Stan Houston. 
I've been doing a radio and television for 40 some years, performance coaching for about the same amount of time. And so I know that in many ways, I and my team can be helpful to you and your business to help you have more of what it takes and have real heart. That's what we do at What It Takes Radio. And uh, thank you for listening in to Interesting Ideas. Reach out to me at stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. All the best and blessings and take heart. Till next time. Bye for now. You gotta have heart. All you really need is heart. When the odds are saying you never win, that's when the grin should start. You gotta have Your luck is batting zero Get your chin up off the floor Mister, you can be a hero You can open any door There's nothing to it but to do it You gotta have heart Miles and miles and miles of heart Oh, it's fine to be a genius, of course But keep that old horse before the car to do it. You gotta have